complete now. Bank on sir. Axis Bank. Bank like a. It is done. Okay. Axis Bank. And Axis Bank Limited. Or ye hai kahan the? Or branch kahan the? Ye Mohali, three B, seven phase. Sorry, Mohali phase seven. ठीक है सर ठीक है जी ठीक है जी सारे जुड़ गए सेंटर ओके गुड मॉर्निंग पार्टिसिपेंट्स माइसेल बी एस वृद्धि आई हैव अराउंड थर्टी वन ईयर्स एक्सपीरियंस इन इंडस्ट्री द मेजर एक्सपीरियंस बींग इन महिंद्रा एंड महिंद्रा पंजाब ट्रैक्टर्स लिमिटेड Aisha Tractor is a Scotch sector, and few automotive companies like uh, uh, Continental Engines Limited, Greaves Cotton Limited, and uh, uh, the last uh, company which I worked for was Kotec India, which is into surface coating solutions. So I will share my experience or my learnings from that organization. So th this is like for an automobile for or a mechanical engineer. this surface coating is uh, this this lecture particularly is like one should have the general knowledge of this field also because now new technology is coming into pa paints powder coating water bond paints so it's a introductory lecture and with touching a few of the new technologies being coming into from the environment point of view from the energy point of view so let's start this so we will be touching uh, uh, i will be covering the introduction to paints and pre treatment then the nano scale pre treatment oxelin then uh, uh, how to save energy by th three stage wet on wet to two bake system then little bit on powder coatings water bond paints then zoning in a paint shop for heat conservation then the zero liquid discharge so that the Uh, the water coming out from the uh, a paint shop or a pre treatment shop is fully recovered and there is no wastage going into uh, rivers or can canals that is the red ld so uh, to begin with in a uh, painted surface the different uh, layers thick of thickness of the protective layer or the coating layer so you can see at the bottom at the bottom this is the uh, base metal of the substrate this can be a metal or a non metal then the uh, you can uh, then the zinc phosphate layer is there the se second one this is like a corrosion resistance layer between the substrate and the paints that we uh, coming over it and the thickness is 2 to 5 micron then the C cd primer the thickness is 20 to 30 microns cathodic electro deposition primer then the surfacer to even out the surface defects the surfacer is used above the cd primer and then this solid top coat which is around 40 40 microns this is for a solid color paints like in india the more most popular is the solid white color you see the the vehicles are white white uh, painted so this is a solid color paint system and in case of some bikes and uh, high end cars you will find metallic color paints also so similarly the zinc phosphate layer the cd primer the surfacer so they they are similar to uh, the solid paint system and then there is a metallic base coat base coat we will see what's metallic base coat then there is a clear coat to give it a shine to uv resistance to better aesthetics that's a clear coat so this is the metallic color paint system and what is the role of different layers of paint 
the, the primers are used to protect the surface from corrosion and to provide good adhesion between the substrate and the top coated paints. And uh, for general industry or in the plant, we do the, this by spray or by uh, manual painting with a brush. But in case of automobile industry, where the expectation of the salt spray life of the painted surface may be 1000 hours or more. So there, uh, this primer is done by cathodic electrode deposition, which result into the life, life of the uh, total system much more as compared to the uh, otherwise manually or spray painted primer system. Then uh, surfacer to ev even out the defects. Uh, on this uh, surface before we do the either we do the solid finish coat or we, we do the metallic base coat and then a clear coat. So these two systems we follow. So primer, surfacer, then either we go to solid finish coat or we go for better, uh, better looks, metallic base coats and clear coats. So pri uh, primers as it is, they, they, they can be used on plastic or wood or metals, of course. So they, they provide good adhesion to the surface, intercoat adhesion for next coats, which is solid coat or top coat, provide corrosion resistance to the substrate. And particularly for metal primer, for automobile, for tractor surface coat uh, components, for washing machines. So uh, the, the sheet is usually low, low carbon uh, sheet and so uh, that's like a metal primer we do with a cathodic electrode deposition. We charge the particles, we make the uh, com component as a negative charge and then the uh, paint particles are charged and they get deposited on the negative charge uh, cathode uh, which is the component itself. So any any bare metal tends, tends to rust when exposed to humid atmosphere and the rusting process starts immediately. Primers containing natural red oxides or zinc, uh, zinc chromates or other combination with different resin as binders provide extra protection to metal surface against corrosion. So uh, these are generally the CD coating or the primer is a epoxy resin based for, the, for better life because the epoxy gives a better life as compared to acrylic. Acrylic generally we use for the top coat. So, so better it has a, uh, and the life, it, they are epoxy based and their zinc chromate rich compounds are there for better corrosion resistance. So like uh, shown is a car, uh, car body dipping into a CD bath. So the component, the CD process usually takes around three minutes. The temperature because of the uh, uh, because of the electrochemical reaction going on, the temperature and the rectifiers, huge rectifiers, DC rectifiers are there. So the temperature keeps on increasing. We have to maintain the bath temperature around 35 degrees centigrade. So that we have to use chillers for cooling the paint, paint and the paint is continuously in circulation. There are number of filters for filtration. So the whole CD system is uh, used and you can say this is the main strength of a, a paint system the, C, the cd part <clears throat> and the thickness achieved is around 20 to 30 microns and usually like in india uh, either a gray gray color or a black color epoxy based uh, metal primer by cd is applied on the components Then the second second step after C, after CD we we do the baking. The baking is usually done at two hundred degree centigrade, and then we go for the surfaces or intermediate coats, because the uh, during the manufacturing of the component there will be some defects. Some will be inherent in the material surface itself. So the the thickness layer of like CD is around twenty micron. Then we have a surfacer or intermediate coat which. Is again, again a uh, layer of paint which we deposit by spray where the thickness further increases and we even out the undulations and the imperfections on the surface. So this 
सो इन एडिशन टू दाइमर द नेक्स्ट कोट इज सरफेसर और इंटरमीडिएट कोट दे विल एनहांस द स्मूथनेस ऑफ द सर्फेस टू बी टॉप कोटेड The intermediate coat is usually applied on zinc, zinc rich primers in protective coat industry to seal the porosity of the primer coat. Also, this uh, primer itself, the because uh, we have to give it a life. The the molecule size of primer is more than the molecule size of the top coat. So we have to fill those por porosity gaps also, so that uh, uh, the interchange of ions between top coat and the Uh, CD primer coat also stops. And then comes the after the uh, surfacer. We have, as we seen, we have the two solutions. Either we go for metal paints. So metal paints, you know, are very lustrous. So th they contain aluminium flakes to create a sparkling sparkling effect, generally called as a metallic finish. This paint is harder to manage than. solid paints because the extra care needed while application then compare comparable to metallic paint is the pearl scent paints contain special lustrous or multicolored mica pigments commonly referred to as pearls pearls pigments impart a colored spark sparkle to the finish which create depth of color so these are the two uh, two type of lustrous paints we do on a surface and then these solid paints as i told you in india like most of the cars are white in color so it's with this solid paint they have no sparkle effect except the plain color this is easiest type of paint to apply and the most common type paint for heavy transport vehicles construction equipment it is also widely used for car trucks machine and motorcycle and it's also the cost effective also because as compared to a metallic paint finish car the this application of this paint is cost effective and after doing the metallic we have to do the clear coat so usually sprayed on top of colored base coat clear coat is glossy and tra transparent coating that always faces environmental abuses for this reason clear coats must be durable enough to resist abrasion and chemically stable enough to withstand uv light clear coats can either solvent or water bond base now just uh, as a introductory we have seen the different layers of thickness so the the first layer was the zinc phosphate layer so we will now discuss uh, what are the a few new technology available in uh, pre treatment part so pre treatment is preparing a proper base for the coating system like during the manufacturing a sheet would have gone into cutting bending drawing so many applications and it will be there will be some cutting oil or some mineral oil would be there which has been used during the draw operation or during the bending operations and dust or other even the scale of scale on the surface of the sheet would be there so before we actually take it for uh, zinc phosphate and then for top coat we need to clean clean remove the oil the oils and the scales so that that is the pre treatment part so before any coating application it is compulsory to clean the surface from rust and impurities impurities and convert it to a better surface condition to achieve the full potential of the selected coating materials the objectives of pre treatment of metal surfaces are removal of impurities including soil scale grease oil metal fillings burr converting the surface for optimum adhesion adhesion of the coating film and uh, the pre treatment of mild steel which is the usually used in the outer skin uh, components of a car or a tractor or other vehicle there there are two two types of uh, surface pre treatment one is the mechanical method where we do either by manual sanding or by a wheel we do the sanding or brushing or we can do by short blasting we or sand blasting we can clean the surface and then there are chemical methods for mass production of course we have to go for chemical methods removing impurities chemically and enhancing surface for coating generally 
the hot rolled uh, components which are thicker also we go for mechanical methods like short blasting or sand blasting and for uh, uh, cold rolled sheets and aluminum parts we go for chemical pre treatment so we will discuss the chemical pre treatment method what we follow before going for uh, actual painting the component so uh, this is the chemical pre treatment which we discuss so when the component of the shape which is to be painted reaches the factory so these are the different steps are to be followed before uh, which is the pre treatment step before going for the final painting so the first step is hot water rinse so the component is usually either by spray or by dipping in a hot water bath the temperature is around 70, 70 to 80 degrees centigrade and it is dipped or sprayed for around 2 minutes to remove uh, any oil oil on the surface and the energy now nowadays the uh, the spray method is used because of the energy available with the spray it will throw any oil adhesion on the surface so that that we call knock off degreasing with the uh, pressurized spray through the nozzles the component is washed there's the knock off degreasing then the uh, degreasing degreasing is the alkaline baths again the temperature in this bath is uh, 62 to 80 degree centigrade and this is again the component is dipped for around 2 uh, to 3 minutes and the the the, the tanks in which uh, these components are being washed they have a constant circulation the the water is from uh, through the pumps they are sent into bag filters then strainers are there so that the environment in the tank itself remains clean then the industrial water rinse is there so that no chemical uh, uh, can move further so we remove the uh, chemical of previous tanks so rinse one then there is industrial water rinse two and then the surface conditioning so like activation we make the surface ready for phosphating that's the activation and usually from hot water rinse till uh, you can say industrial water rinse the tanks we can make in uh, mild steel some 5 to 6 mm sheet but from surface conditioning onwards uh, we use the stainless steel uh, tanks in ss304 or uh, 312 for because to for the life of the plant because generally the plant is designed for 10 years so and surface conditioning done for 30 seconds again the temperature it's uh, at the normal temperature then the main main uh, pre treatment step that's the phosphating where the component is dipped into phosphoric uh, acid uh, compounds so that a zinc phosphate or iron phosphate layer is deposited on this surface which is the barrier for corrosion so after phosphating then again there are two stage rinses then passivation so that uh, we can the cavities or the gaps in the phosphate crystal generated on, on the surface they are filled and the actual reaction stops then one uh, demineralized water rinse so that all the chemicals and others are removed so then this is the pre treatment process we we follow so you can see that the number of steps are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so at earlier this used to be a seven tank process now it has gone to 11 because as the production rates keep on increasing we add a few steps and decrease the time in each each and we want better surfaces also better salt spray life also so this pre treatment process from seven tanks now it's up to either 9 or 11 are there 9 is compulsory you can say and most of the tanks like hot water rinse kod degreasing then phosphating then passivation they are at temperature from 60 to 80 degree centigrade so lot of energy is required 
and more the number of tanks more is the evaporation losses or the carry over losses so benchmarking this we we will see how a few new technologies have come to reduce this total process we will try to reduce the number of stages the temperatures the time period and ultimately achieve the our pre, our surface uh, our pre treatment goals so uh, this is the phosphating process so phosphating is formation of a thin layer on base metal to improve its corrosion resistance and adhesion it serves as a conversion coating in which a dilute solution of phosphoric acid and phosphate salts chemically react with the surface to form a layer of insoluble crystalline phosphates so there are three types of phosphate surfaces we uh, do iron zinc and manganese phosphate the iron and zinc are the most popular and particularly the zinc phosphate all the sheet metal that is zinc phosphated and some thicker thicker or the heavy sections like uh, if we divide uh, a, a, a tractors small into the sheet metal parts and the main body the engine gearbox the main uh, body then the main body is usually iron phosphated and the sheet metal parts the outer skin parts they are zinc phosphated and the coating weight per meter square is 2 to 3.5 gram per meter square and crystal size is less than 10 microns so the th the thickness uh, thickness of the phosphated layer is around 10 micron okay the uh, just to show you the temperatures and the time spent in e each uh, uh, pre treatment tank so some 20 second in hot water rinse at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade so similarly you can see the process time will increase with the number of tanks and the temperature being maintained in uh, each tank will require lot of energy so now the concern with this the you can say the historically being followed pre treatment seven tank nine or now 11 tanks the concerns over the this pre treatment is the rising energy costs because most of the tanks the the, uh, the process tanks you can say leaving side the water in they are heated then tightening environmental discharge limits in the form of water and sludge because after there are weekly or monthly guidelines to drain the tank and fill with the fresh and uh, in water water rinse there is a overflow continuous overflow also happening which goes into the etp so we have to reduce the uh, load on the etp also to overcome these uh, two two important uh, uh th there is alternate pre treatment process which which is uh, developed by chemical company that's that's called the nanotechnology silent technology phosphor phosphorus free zinc oxide based coating silent based chemistry so these are a few of the names it is being referred to so oxalent uh, oxalent technology is a novel nano scale metal pre treatment technology nano scale because the thick thickness is coming in nanometers only the thickness of the layer is very small it is free of hazardous metals and provides superior corrosion resistance for a wide range of multi metal substrates it replaces traditional iron and zinc phosphate products <coughs> so uh, here a comparison in the uh, shown of the oxalane process as compared to a e coat process the e coat which i said the cathode electro deposition or the e coat so you can see there there, there is uh, in a conventional e coat process cleaning top rinse activation phosphating then tap rinse sorry passivation de-airing de-airing then e coat right so there there are 
nine steps minimum nine <coughs> usually the nine or 10 because we have to add one or more more, more di rinses also in between and in case of a powder coating process so cleaning tap rinse activation phosphating tap rinse di rinse drying and powder so again there are eight steps eight baths the component has to go either and have the dipping or by pressurized cleaning is there and in case of oxalane which is shown in the middle row so alkaline cleaning tap rinse di rinse and then the oxalane which is replacement of the zinc phosphate or the iron phosphate and then you go for di rinse di rinse and then e coat or if you are do the powder coating then after oxalane di rinse di rinse drying and powder coating so we we have save the number of stages right so number of stages are less when we use oxalane uh, technology as compared to normal process for e coat or powder coating and other advantages are this, the application of oxalane this can be either spray or dip we can do by both or by ro rolling and bath temperature is ambient like in case of zinc phosphate it was 50 to 60 deg degree centigrade it's ambient and the contact time the zinc phosphate is usually 3 minutes or up to 5 minutes also and here it is depending upon the shape of the component or the requirement the, the time is very very less and no activation step is required we have removed one uh, pre treatment stage itself and no further passivation is required and oxalane process are suitable for both wet on wet application as well as drying prior to painting even we can remove the uh, primer curing uh, which we need to do so it it can be done wet on wet also so that we we are remove able to remove one oven itself and it can also be operated without rinsing if necessary so again saving of water rinse water so the advantages or the benefits of oxalane products short treatment time zinc phosphate replacement iron phosphate replacement to be done prior to painting bare corrosion protection and passivation also not required this we already seen and uh, other other very important is the last two lines if you if i read practically no sludge is formed during the process since the metal surface are not etched to any great extent in a normal zinc phosphate uh, uh, treatment the sludge generation is huge we we have to use filter presses or pfe continuous filters which 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 are very expensive like for a uh, normal plant which we supply to pune we have to import a filter which cost around some 20 lakhs rupees so because there is a lot of sludge generated in the zinc phosphate tank and we have to continuously filter it out otherwise the finish of the paint will deteriorate there will be uh, deposition of salts on the surface so that's not required if we go for oxalane and uh, this comparison gives the benefits on like this is the zinc phosphate process and this is the oxalane the heating if it's 100 in zinc phosphate it's only 42 so 58% benefit and the heating energy here i mean by gas or diesel cng png by the, that and on the electrical load for the pumps for the filters so the electrical energy also reduces from 100 to 77 and rinsing water requirement from 100 to 40 only and waste 100 to 70 so this is the uh, major benefits of oxalin pre treatment so this is uh, given bit in details and the 
layer thickness in zinc phosphate up to 20 up to 10 microns uh, uh, is the layer, layer thickness in zinc phosphate and in oxalin that's why it's called nano it's 50 to 100 nanometers and the coating weight again in zinc phosphate 1.5 to 3 gram per meter square and it's 50 to 100 milligram per meter square so the coating or the consumption of salts will also be very less in case of this nano nanotechnology oxalin and just a com uh, pictorial uh, comparison on the uh, left side is the this is the substrate metal then the phosphate layer in green and then the paint it may be ced or the top coat and in case of uh, oxalin shown on the right this uh, gray bottom gray is the metal substrate then the blue thickness is very less of the oxalin layer and then the top paint so this is the advantages of oxalin uh, pre treatment which replaces the zinc phosphate so now the new plants coming up even in india are, they are going for this so uh, we had, while I was in Kotec India, we had supplied a plant to uh, De Denmark. So where this nanotechnology, the, this oxygen treatment was used in place of normal zinc phosphate. But of course, the cost of chemicals will be higher. So that is why India is not switching over immediately. But with the kind of water conservation, energy conservation, so slowly at the better quality. So India will also go into it for the new new plants coming up. And this uh, this one sl slide is for the uh, showing the type of paints available where we can reduce the number of uh, curing or baking stages. We can reduce the number of ovens. So in, in the present painting system or the conventional, it has a pre-treatment which we have discussed, then electro deposition. Then we bake. This baking is usually around 200 degrees centigrade. Then the surfacer coat. Then again bake. Then the base coat, clear coat, and then bake. So there are three bake stages coming in the conventional system of the painting. And now there are uh, two bake two bake system technologies available in place of three of the conventional. So pre-treatment, ED, bake. Then surfacer, then flash off. We give some five, six minutes so that the solvent evaporation happens naturally. We do not bake it in an oven. Then the base coat, then again flash off, then clear, then bake. So you can say the surfacer to base to clear is wet on wet. So we, we have uh, used only two ovens. So helping in reduction of the energy required in the oven. Because the temperature as uh, in a, in a uh, liquid paint system that is around 200, uh, 140 degrees centigrade, 140 degrees centigrade. So less is the number of ovens, less is the heat energy load required. So this is one of the improvements which is uh, currently uh, being adapted. And then some uh, improvements on the powder coating uh, developments. Like in a, a conventional powder coating system, which are employ, employed uh, in most of the, you can say the small scale or medium scale. So the uh, powder, uh, after the powder coating, the oven temperature is around uh, 200, 220 degrees centigrade. And the component is there for 10 to 20 minutes for proper curing. So, so that the cross linking happen and we have a, uh, paint with the very good finish, it has an life. And what are the uh, improvements happening? Like in a normal powder coating, there will be a slight orange peel free, uh, will be there. It will not be as smooth as a liquid paint. So now powder co powder coating uh, powders are available where there, there will be no orange peel. Then low bake pow powders are available. As I told you, conventionally, 200 degrees centigrade. So in place of that, epoxy and pure clister 
powders are available which requires to be heated only up to 130 degrees centigrade in place of 200 if we uh, cure it for 30 minutes and if we increase the temperature slightly to 140 then only in 20 minutes and 150 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes so pow such powders are available then uh, the conventional powders have the dry film thickness of 50 to 60 microns which are conventionally being used now powders are available where the film thickness is 35 to 45 microns so less consumption of powder and then some antibacterial powders for microwave oven hospital furniture pharma equipment these are the some special powders which are now available these are some of the uh, improvements like pure epoxy powders as uh, the current product range the pure epoxy powder as primer for wheel rims two wheeler fuel tanks then pure polyester will be polyester is expensive so it will be used uh, on the top top surface only <laughs> And uh, PP pure polyester glossy powder wheels and clear coats, and then the powders based upon the use are available like uh, HR powders, heat resistant powder for silencer, muffler, and engine blocks. Because if you see in the earlier times on a tractor silencer, most of the paint will be go gone in five six months. Now such powder coating high temperature powders are available which can be used on mufflers and engine blocks then insulation powder for starters and electrical windings and a few of the limitation of powder coating metallic fin finishes liquid paints superior finish the metallic like we have the metallic paints in the liquid painting in powder we are not having that 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 kind of powder available and finish of powder coating is also not as good as the liquid paint And the industry is further working to achieve thinner fil films, 20, 10 to 20 microns, which as I told you earlier, currently is some 50 to 60 microns. Low temperature cure, cure 120 degrees centigrade, which conventionally is 200 degrees centigrade. And corrosion resistance and adhesion without pretreatment. No pretreatment required. We directly coat the substrate. And then two coat powder system with single bake, right? Metallic finishes as good as liquid paints. So we have to work and get the uh, these improvements. And uh, okay, now the latest paint paint system which uh, like Toyota in India has adopted. So these are the water based paints. So the difference between water based and uh, oil based or solvent based, uh, based paints is the that in place of solvent in a normal paint in water base we have the water as the in place of solvent but the we are we are not able to replace 100 percent solvent in a normal normal uh, liquid paint the solvent may be some 50 to 60 percent but in a water based paint the solvent quantity reduces to half or one third still we will have some solvent portion present in it and the uh, main reason for going for water based uh, coatings water based coating is the volatile organic compounds or vocs which are there in solvent based conventional paints which are hazardous to the environment as well as to the operator So currently, water-based coatings account for approximately 80% of paint sold in the residential market. And an example of this is like we do the white washing in our houses. They are all water-based. So similar water-based paints are now being used in automotive industry. So what are the advantages of water-borne acrylic paints? 
low VOC, low order, because VOC is less, so order, low order. A primary advantage when painting interiors or poorly vented areas. Quick dry, uh, dry times, facilitating the application of a second coat. Excellent durability, lower or no risk of fire from handling inflammable, flammable solvents because the solvent quantity is less. And we have to, in case of uh, normal solvent based, we have to store the solvent also in the containers. So no, no such solvent is required in separate containers which are very inflammable. Easy and safe cleanup, less hazardous disposal. And dry film thickness is 12 to 15 microns as compared to solvent 50 to 75 microns. So the film thickness is also low, resulting into low consumption of paint. So some of the challenges you can say in the waterborne paints are, it is very sensitive to the primer which has been done. And then the filtration of the air that has to be uh, controlled and this the total painting system or the drying system in waterborne paints depends on the humidity. So humidity control has to be very critical. The temperature range also has to be controlled. We cannot have below zero degree centigrade because the paint itself can freeze or we cannot have very high, very high also because then the water can boil. So the temperature control and the humidity control in waterborne painting booths and uh, booths has to be very done precisely. Like in a solvent based system, temperature is for the drying, but for better drying in waterborne system, the humidity control is must in place of temperature in solvent based. So, just take a comparison in this slide. The existing good good paint, then high solid paint and waterborne paint. So, uh, the VOC in the existing paints, some 66 gram per meter square of surface to be painted. So, this is the VOC emitted by a normal paint. And now we also are having high solid high solid paints where the content of sol solvent has been reduced though still it's solvent based so it comes around 45 to 50 gram per meter square in high solid paints and in waterborne it's around 25 so the benefit you can say with the conventional uh, from conventional 66 gram per meter square to 25 gram per meter square that's the level of uh, voc reduction by waterborne paints So we covered uh, the waterborne paints and some zoning done nowadays in the uh, paint uh, uh, booth, uh, oven and the total where this equipment is installed. So zone, uh, zoning means how the air movement is controlled so that minimal effect on the operator is there and the energy losses are also less. Like uh, the system is shown here, if you see from the right, right the fresh air is from the environment, fresh air is taken and this fresh air is passed over the spray booth, right? Then it, it goes over the oven, uh, a camelback oven is shown here. It goes over the oven and then it is discharged to the environment, right? So that every time near the booth where the operator has to work, it remains a pleasant environment. The VOC is less. So, this kind of zoning, this the benefit of which are prevention of dust scattering, better environment for humans by fresh air supply to working zone and exhausting from hot zone, which is above the oven. Right? And even this hot air can be used for some purpose if required for heating of some uh, process uh, tank or uh, other equipment. Uh, this is not very clear. Okay. Now we can see the uh, this last topic on in this presentation. That's the vacuum evaporator or zero liquid discharge. In a in a normal normal pretreatment uh, process, 
as we have seen there can be seven tanks nine tanks or 13 tanks there are different chemicals which frequently weekly monthly by bi monthly we have to dispose of so the whole load goes on to the uh, etp plant right so in etp with the different stages uh, the quality of water from initially being with very heavy metals chemical rich it has to improve and finally the water coming out after all the or most of the impurities are taken care and its bod cod levels are uh, safe then it can be used for gardening or some forestation purpose for such purposes only still you can say the water is not being reused we, uh, we have to pump in fresh water to fill those tanks which have been discharged right so now these uh, vacuum evaporators or the uh, zero liquid discharge uh, equipment is available so what we do here is uh, it's a plant here so vacuum evapor industrial water uh, waste water is evaporated from the the discharge from the tanks under vacuum of about 650 millibar at a temperature of 85 degree centigrade the emerging steam free of heavy metal because heavy metals will settle and only the steam at this low pressure at 85 degree will be generated so that can be collected and compressed and then uh, steam is heated to about 120 degree centigrade the superheated steam is then used to provide energy to the evapor evaporation process now this evaporated steam that it can be further cooled and this water complete water free of all the heavy metals radicals then it can be again used to fill the process tanks so we need not go for fresh pumping from the ground so we can keep on recirculating the same same and the high dense you can say the mass collected in the evaporator so they these can be collected by agencies which collect those heavy metals waste and reuse it for preparing so, uh, the chemical and salts which can again be used for the uh, uh, different process <coughs> tanks so we 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 have you can say taken back the water for after the uh, discharge from the tanks back into the process as a fresh water so highly automated process rinse water can be reused 90 to 95% residue compact low volume so that residue is in a compact which is easy to dispose of course disadvantage is high investment but with the kind the water scarcity going to come this has to be used at some stage so uh, this is a chemical physical treatment so number of stages are there so the, there is a collecting process water the uh, this is the conventional etp system collecting process water then the batch decontamination so chemical lot of things are added then precipitation flocculation then filter press for compacting the waste waste residue then neutralization then final check and then sever or it used for gardening or some other purpose and in case of vacuum evaporator vacuum dust residue and the water can it's shown sever but the quality of water is such it can be reused for the process itself and if we uh, see the roi so uh, the investment initially is higher but after operation of this is an example only after operation of say one and a half year we have am amortized and then the investment uh, is recovered and it becomes more useful right so this is it so we can take questions on this or it was a very heavy topic not because this is not related to automobile or mechanical engineering but just for general knowledge and 
to update on you on the various topics that's why we have taken so any questions from online centers and offline centers No. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. No questions. Okay. Thank you, thank sir. You. Very nice uh, information you have passed to us. Thank you. It was very practical. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank sir. You. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So we we can now have a tea break and restart after fifteen minutes.
So good morning and welcome back. So the second topic uh, which uh, we will cover in this uh, pre-lunch session will be on electric vehicles. So uh, in this pres presentation we can see the specifications of various uh, systems which get into an electric vehicle which uh, replace the normal engine gearbox or other uh, uh, driving systems and see some of the features of the vehicles which are coming into india and how it all the journey of indian electric vehicle story how it is developing <clears throat> So, before getting directly into uh, electric, I just want to mention this uh, Seaz vehicle by Maruti Suzuki, Maruti Suzuki, which was a mild hybrid vehicle, right? And uh, just if we see the the four, uh, the four models of this Seaz, the fuel consumption of the top one is Seaz Petrol, then with automatic transmission, then with manual transmission, and the diesel, manual transmission, and the last one is the Seaz diesel, same engine, with a mild hybrid, with manual transmission. The, the fuel consumption figures you can say, you can see are 28.1 kilometer per liter as per testing at ARI on the test cycle, uh, the car, the, this car is tested for the emission trials. So the fuel consumption of this uh, hybrid vehicle is much better than the other three vehicles. So just what is this mild hybrid, uh, hybrid in these SEAS, what are its features? So this is the... Uh, they, they say it's this sm uh, smart hybrid vehicle system, SHVS. It has an integrated starter generator, ISG, which is, a, which is a combination of a starter and alternator. So there are no separate, uh, in a normal vehicle, there is a alternator for charging battery and there is a starter for starting the engine. So it is an integrated starter generator. The, the motor function is not only for starting the engine, but it improves fuel efficiency and pickup by supplementing the engine's power. So when the requirement of pickup uh, or the faster pickup or acceleration is required, this, this uh, acts as a motor and helps in helps the engine and works as a hybrid. Then it becomes a hybrid uh, vehicle. So this is the main ISD feature which, which uh, helps in the better pickup and the fuel consumption. Then there is a idle stop and start function. So when whenever there is a red light and the driver reaches that stage, the vehicle will automatically stop. He need not switch it off because it is otherwise recommended to switch it off. But uh, sometimes people do, do not. So the vehicle itself will switch it off. So during the red light, so it will the engine will be off and we will be saving some fuel for that. And as soon as the uh, driver presses the clutch after the yellow or green light comes, the vehicle will start. No need to push the key for that. So idle stop and start. Of course, uh, the starter uh, that ISG or any starter has to be designed for this feature because the number of start stop will increase so the life of the starter then has to be designed the kind of structure rigidity or the number of cycles it has to be tested a normal like a normal starter is tested some 80000 cycles uh, for a car so this this starter has to be designed for much more because the number of starts stop frequency has increased 
and then uh, this vehicle sears shvs this is having brake regeneration so uh, bra braking charges the special high capacity battery and generate uh, generates energy to assist the engine's idle stop start function and helps the engine during acceleration so the braking energy is recovered and put back into battery through the isc then there is a gear shifter indicator the driver will, will be guided to change the gear at the right rpm and depending on his accelerator position what he is demanding so this will help in selecting the right gear of course for fuel efficiency it's always recommended that we go, go for a higher gear that that's why in most of the vehicles which now are coming even the manual transmission the number of gears have gone up to 6 the, uh, the vehicles like this uh, tata harrier it has 6 uh, manual speeds and some of the automatics which are coming now they are with the uh, eight internal gears so there are eight gear shifts uh, happening and uh, uh, the government was promoting this uh, hybrid vehicles uh, under fam faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electrical vehicles this policy was made in 2015 but um, no no uh, big pro uh, progress happened because like sears even mahindra and other some two three manufacturers also they had this mild micro hybrids which actually was not uh helping that much to shift to hybrid vehicle so government decided to directly go to electrical vehicles and stop this uh, hybrid promotion promotion uh, maybe last or last to last year and uh, so this uh, uh, discount on uh, uh, if uh, this uh, hybrid vehicle stopped that's why if you would have noticed the sale of sias vehicle itself it was becoming very popular due to the excise benefit but after the last year's policy the sale of sias vehicle has come down because now the promotion is for the electric vehicles and uh, the subsidy comparative uh, subsidy for electric vehicle a small uh, vehicle below 10 lakhs ev electric vehicle so one can get a benefit of around rupees 75000 no road tax and no registration So that kind of advantages are there. Earlier on uh, hybrid, it, the size was less to the tune of twelve point five percent against twenty eight or eighteen percent. So now the benefits on EVs are huge. Similarly, on the uh, Hyundai Kona vehicle, so there is a benefit maybe around one point five to two lakhs. <coughs> now the vehicle is available for around twenty three lakhs. So. From the twenty-five, that was including all the taxes. Which one? Hyundai. I don't know. Hyundai. 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 Our uh, we are waiting for EV vehicles. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think this is very necessary. Yeah. We the first thing. Yeah. So it's a pain, right? Yeah, yeah. So at that time, so we are not doing it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> And uh, if you few years back, you can say maybe five years, the the vehicles which were coming for. this uh, co2 reduction or reduction in pollution so thoughts were on solar vehicles solar battery operated vehicles then petrol hybrid electric vehicles hybrid vehicles electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles so the policy was not very clear so everyone was working with the di different concept because things were not clear but you can say with the last two years now things have become very clear that electric vehicles ultimately 
they they are going to come so by earlier uh, as per the ministry uh, by, by two, uh, 2023 or 2025 all the two wheelers and three wheelers were planned to be with without any ic engine it was planned to be ev but then the resistance came from uh, industry also and the challenges coming from the uh, availability of components the localization so now there has not be any fixed date but target is that in next 5 years we have some 20 to 30% and by 2030 10 years from now we have around 50% electrical vehicles because indian industry has yet to gear up the availability of uh, all the parts required for electric vehicles so that localization is still remaining a challenge so what were what were the initial plans were based upon importing everything but with importing the, there is a huge employment in india on ic engines gear boxes gear manufacturing companies and all add ons so that is why this slow uh, change over has to happen recommended to happen because there there will be there will be ma- uh, there will be many startups or new companies which see this as an opportunity so they want to just invest and take a lead as compared to the regular manufacturers like bajaj mahindra or other but it's not that easy because the kind of plants and the volumes they are there in particularly in two wheeler and four wheeler it's not easy to replace with electric vehicles as it is you were asking something sir just like a plastic issue uh, plastic the plastic is just like plastic issue right it's not totally good right partly partly just right 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 that's right that's right so main, main thing is that now the employment in uh, this this kind of industry of ic using ic engine that till the the parallel factories come up for manufacturing of electric motors batteries or controllers required for electric vehicle till our our manufacturing uh, companies gear, gear into that 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 should be the transition time because make in india if you implement in 2023 then at least for electric vehicles our manufacturing make in india is zero i would say i'm sorry to say right so some time is required till the localization of these parts happen two wheelers and three wheelers now uh, product in india no they, they that production you can see is also like a kit coming and assembling and selling so the localization part uh, even the structure i have seen these vehicle the body is also imported so body be imported body be imported hai <laughs> no body has invested in, in the body parts so lot of challenge even even the three wheelers you see i think 80 to 90% still is the imported parts even the body so the localization is only 10 to 20% so that change over is a challenge <laughs> right so uh, the scenario became clear you can say 2 3 years and with the uh, companies like tesla they very aggressively getting into and becoming successful so uh, now the journey is clear so uh, now everyone is working on electric vehicle and with a planned way right and just uh, how how the electric vehicles we have seen the e rickshaws in delhi right and the kind of features those vehicles had we can see the features or the downgraded vehicle that used to be and in only after 5 6 years running without any license driving license or registration in 2015 this policy was made for this vehicles by government of india and which required a registration and the driving license so the driving license became mandatory in 2015 the top speed limited to 25 km per hour because as it is the body of the e rickshaw 
is not accident uh, safe right the kind of uh, crash test or actually required so because the vehicle has to be made lighter for the better range so the available body parts are such the speed has to be limited and uh, up to four passengers only no overloading and four passenger plus 40 kg of luggage allowed and in case of uh, commercial e carts which were called e carts the transport uh, the goods allowed were up to 310 kg right and if you compare with the normal three wheeler diesel or petrol the, the minimum is 500 kg the pay payload and uh, up to 750 kg like a tata is is for uh, one ton payload the co component wise specifications the motor electric motor 750 watt to 1000 watt and it's a bldc brushless uh, dc motor and vehicle vehicle weight only no passenger 210 kg top speed 25 kmph and range 100 to 120 kilometers under the ideal test conditions as prescribed by the motor vehicle act and the other feature other features of these vehicles were brake drum at the rear and ground clearance around 6 inches so number of passengers four with 40 kg uh, luggage and uh, payload for commercial e carts 310 kg and batteries of these were lead acid only so the four batteries 12 volt so the total voltage configuration is 48 volt and in the ampere are 80 to 100 ampere are four batteries the tire size 3 uh, into 14 inch and the the uh, the power pack was with the final reduction around 10 is to 1 reduction from motor to the uh, differential then the differential and axles and the final wheels so that was the configuration decided in, in the march 2015 ru ruling by government of india for a e rickshaw or e cart and if you compare the the this power usually it's 850 or 1 kilowatt only the available uh, petrol or diesel engines for the three wheeler they, they are in the range of around 5 to 6 kilowatt so because the lead acid battery is being used to have a some reasonable range of 100 kilometers so the top speed was limited right so this is the and the uh, main parts of uh, kit which uh, which comes this is the bldc motor and a 10 is to 1 reduction happens in this gearbox then comes a differential like a normal vehicle and then the drive shaft and the brakes so this whole whole kit this whole kit comes from we we import and the vehicle is built on this and this controller for speed control or for the ch charging while charging the, uh, all the controls are happening through this and then we have the hand accelerator for the vehicle speed controls uh, this is sch schematic shown here so uh, batteries like i said there will be four four batteries 12 volt for 48 volt system then controller is there uh this is the hand throttle like a normal uh, auto rickshaw or three wheeler is having and uh, then there is a brake because now the whole circuit has to be controlled through the controller only so brake is there and from the controller the output goes to the motor which then uh, further there are gears and the drive wheel and the uh, wheel hubs so this is the uh, and uh, here is the uh, for charging of the battery so charging circuit is there you know alternative 
Pardon? Alternate. No. Alternate is not there. You have to charge from inline, from residential or from there. And the charging was only through 15 amps residential you can do. So overnight you put it, by morning you have some charge in it. And accidentally if your vehicle drains out on the road, then it is, <laughs> nobody knows what is to be done because there is no charging system available or there. So charging has to be, you can say the vehicle is made to stand only. Of course, uh, I worked on one, one uh, of the vehicle in Continental Engines Limited, where we thought of like in this system, we, we have a very small engine. Like in a three-wheeler engine, the engine is uh, 250cc in case of uh, petrol or CNG and around 400cc in diesel. So we thought of putting a 75cc or 50cc, very small engine, which will keep on running when the uh, driver is waiting for customers or that, that time, that engine is running and it will keep on charging. <laughs> but there is no uh, regulation allow allowing this. So we cannot have an engine on, <laughs> on electric vehicle to charge it. So no regulation is there. So we, we never tried it. Yeah, these are the all the parts and uh, the mo motor specification BLDC. So different available depending upon the power requirement. Voltage is 48 volt or 60 volt. If you want more power, maybe 60 volt. Then RPM, uh, 3000 RPM and Hall effect sensor feedback because it's a brushless DC motor. So starting, we, we have the Hall effect sensor feedback. And this vehicle we had built in Continental engine. So the, it's a rear, rear wheel drive. This is the motor. And we use the normal three wheeler gearbox, four speed gearbox. And then coupled it with the uh, rear wheels of the vehicle. And the motor which we used were bigger, 2.5 kilowatt at 3000 RPM and a four speed gearbox. In a normal uh, uh, e-rickshaw, th there is only one speed reduction, one is to 10, one reduction only. And the motor below one kilowatt. So we used higher configuration for having uh, and uh, apart from that, battery was under floor. So four batteries kept in this. So under floor battery. Uh, this is a 150 ampere or four batteries. And maybe each was weighing around 40 kg. So that is the one of the major drawbacks of electrical vehicle, the weight of the batteries. So this 160 kg batteries equal to <laughs> three persons <laughs> so lot of dead weight it has to carry that is why the cars this is tesla and other you will find the weight of these is starting from 1500 kg with the kind of battery weight coming into the vehicle and uh, this throttle we we had to put replace the original uh, CNG with the new throttle system and a uh, control controller we fixed uh, in this area. Yeah. So uh, controller rating was 48 volt and current rating 125 amps controller is there. And uh, as you know, uh, these are uh, pulse width modular techniques these controllers use where we uh, and uh, uh, the, the voltage varies between the like a zero volt to the 48 volt rating and we will keep on changing the width of width and height of this uh, the uh, loop you can say so by which the power, uh, like it's a on and off, 
the pulse width is like we are switching the battery current number of times right so we can increase the width this pulse width and the height to give more current to the motor for running better for at a faster speeds and uh, these are some of the high end uh, electric cars running in usa europe and uh, here i have made a list of specification how we specify the uh, various parts of a electric vehicle the three models we are comparing uh, to, this is the tesla the middle one is the 2020 the latest tesla model and this is the chevrolet bolt 2017 model so the range ra range of course you know is the kilometers or miles from one charge to the other charge the maximum distance the vehicle can cover under standard test condition so the latest vehicle like this tesla model x it can go up to 320 miles and the top speed of these vehicles around 130 miles per hour of the tesla vehicle and the uh, the reason another reason why the, the electric vehicles are uh, getting popular is the pickup or the 0 to 60 miles per hour so in the earlier tesla model it was less than 6 seconds and the recent vehicles these are available in two configuration in one of the configuration it can reach from 0 to 60 miles per hour in less than 4.4 second and in the high end vehicle in 2.7 seconds so that's a, almost you feel like sitting in a aer aeroplane with the kind of acceleration we are able to get and the, this this model around 7 second and the motor power tremendous power available in the latest models in the high end vehicle of tesla model x it's there there are two motors 259 hp in the front and 503 hp in the rear two motors are available a front wheel as well uh, rear also of course the the other other two vehicles shown here are with the single motor 3 300 and the uh, drive like in the tesla model it was rear wheel drive but in this uh, 2020 tesla model x it's all wheel drive so there are two motors one in front one in the re rear axle and uh, chevy bolt is front wheel drive like a normal car the battery cap capacity kilowatt hours the latest tesla vehicle model x it goes up to 100 kilowatt hour <coughs> and just uh, as i told you earlier the battery weight in this chevy vehicle the battery pack lithium ion battery pack weight is 450 440 kg <laughs> so that is one of the major uh, work to be done on the battery weight reduction and price of uh, these vehicles like tesla model which is 2 years old 35000 dollars and the these high end vehicles around 1 lakh dollars and bolt chevy again around 37000 so actually you can say the people started shifting when this tesla model 3 was launched the bookings done were around 4 5 lakh bookings were made in maybe one or two months so even the uh, those bookings are being honored even in 2020 and the uh, transmission it's a very simple transmission uh, in case of electric vehicles this tesla model x single speed transaction 9.34 is to one reduction so only single reduction gearbox very compact and usually uh, like in a normal car there are synchron automatic synchro mesh gearboxes cvts so many thing it's a simple uh uh epicyclic reduction only 
तो दी कंपैक्टनेस और दी ट्रांसमिशन पार्ट इज वेरी सिंपल इन केस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स एंड दी फ्यूल इकोनॉमी और दी ऑपरेटिंग कॉस्ट व्हिच इज दी वन ऑफ दी मेजर पैरामीटर्स फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल वहीकल्स बिकमिंग सो पॉपुलर दिस मॉडल टेस्ला this is giving around 86 miles per gallon petrol equivalent right or you uh, in other figure 38 kilowatt hour for 100 miles right so if we convert uh, if we convert this like 38 kilowatt hour per 100 miles so 38 kilowatt like in india the per unit charge is around 6 rupees per kilowatt hour so this this will be around say 230 rupees right 230 rupees and you are able to travel 160 kilometers so in 230 rupees 160 160 kilometers and a normal if we take a gasoline car so for 160 kilometer if 16 kmpl is its average so 10 liters so 10 liters into rupees 70 700 rupees as compared to 230 so almost running cost is 1/3 by electrical charging and this figure for this chevy bolt being a small uh, vehicle it's 119 miles per gallon gasoline equivalent now these are two uh, vehicles which have been launched in india <coughs> <clears throat> this Nexon EV by Tata Motors and Hyundai Kona Electric. The range, the uh, miles in miles, it's for Nexon EV two hundred thirteen miles. and kona electric vehicle is 280 miles right and the top speed of nexon is around 80 and it will be some 1 uh, 120 for uh, hyundai kona and the the acceleration or 0 to 60 miles per hour in seconds 9.9 and 9.7 so you will find these figures are much higher than the european or american vehicles which were 7 second or below that and the motor power 95 kilowatt and if we see in the hyundai kona it's 101 kilowatt motor and the motor hyundai kona it's a permanent magnet synchronous motor we will see its features in the later slides and transmission is single speed automatic same single speed only one reduction and uh, uh, the important feature the coefficient of uh, uh, this uh, air air flow that is also now because the all the electrical vehicles being weight heavy in weight the the flow coefficient they are targeting below 0.3 and the instant torque availability this is another why the pickup or the acceleration is so so good or the drivability of these electrical vehicles are is so liked by uh, buyer the availability to available torque is 245 newton meter and 395 in case of hyundai kona and if, if you compare with the any the, the diesel engine or the petrol engine torque uh this this figure like this 245 on a normal nexon uh, will be half of it so so 100 120 to some 150 newton meter so they will be the torque available is almost double you can say in a electric vehicle and it's available instantaneously in a diesel vehicle uh, there is a turbo charger so the, the time you press the accelerator and for the vehicle to pick up that speed there is some turbo lag so some time is lost 
before you actually feel the vehicle is acceleration accelerating but in case of electric vehicle this is available instantaneously and at any speed you are there in the normal uh, diesel or petrol vehicle there is a torque curve there is a torque curve depending upon the rpm it peaks around some rpm and then it drops down at lower rpm but in an electric vehicle this torque available starts from zero speed from the right same torque available instantaneously and available in no turbo lag and battery capacity in kilowatt hour 30 in nexon vehicle and 39.2 in hyundai kona vehicle so kona that way is much high power high battery capacity better range vehicle and of course uh the price is also 14 lakhs for nexon ev and 23.7 lakhs for hyundai kona of course the class of vehicle is totally different <coughs> and the battery uh, battery warranty because everyone is worried about the battery because replacement of battery cost maybe one third of the vehicle so 8 years or 1 lakh 60 thousand kilometers warranty companies are giving for the battery and the uh, uh, little bit on the battery charging uh, systems available so on the vehicle itself which is given as uh, standard arrangement the ac charging system is given in the vehicle so the on the nexon ev this this can charge uh, in 8.5 8 and a half hours from 10% to 90% so up to 90% you can charge in 8.5 hours Eight and a half hours overnight. You can put it into fifteen amp socket, and you can charge up to ninety percent. And uh, in Kona, in six or ten minutes, so better charger is there. And because the time is uh, quite large, so on the workshops or at the dealer end or on the highways, and even uh, maybe some of the. uh you can see the employers the employers will be al also be putting up this uh, faster chargers so these are uh, dc chargers where you can charge from 0 to 80% in 60 minutes so you can stop at a restaurant have food in the meantime you can get your vehicle charged to 80% because it, uh, why 80% because it's not recommended to charge with this fast charger up to 100% so uh, up to 80 you can use this fast charger then you have to use your house uh, your household 15 amps ac supply for charging up to 90 or 100% so the and uh, uh, the same thing which i uh, written in the ta table the nexon motor is uh it's a three phase permanent magnet synchronous motor with peak torque of 129 ps and torque of 245 newton meter right and the uh, battery is 30.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and it has been tested for 1 million kilometers so and this is the uh, ip67 certified safety Uh, parameters and the kind of uh, fuel consumption and uh, emission reduction being claimed by tata motors for a daily running of 100 kilometers so as per their calculation over 5 years period it can save rupees 5.65 lakhs in fuel cost and the co2 reduction to the tune of 16.93 million grams which is equivalent to 156 full grown trees right so this benefit of co2 with this uh, no uh, greenhouse gas coming from the vehicle itself so this kind of uh, benefits to environment are there and to the customer some fuel cost saving is there
and uh, now we can see the configuration of the uh, motor gearbox or differential different configuration uh, these component or systems are put on the vehicle like uh, in these vehicle nissan leaf and chevrolet vehicle uh, it's front wheel drive like it replaces the existing engines which are also for front wheel drive with the with the motor fixed gear fixed gearing and differential so ic engine and gearbox going out and motor and fixed gear ratio single reduction that's coming into and it's put in the front wheel itself acceleration technology acceleration hmm. no acceleration is because you have seen the torque available is so huge yeah. so that is helping in this higher acceleration in reduced the increasing speed how is it uh, like if you have to stop yeah. i will cover further also yeah. otherwise like a normal braking is there yeah. but most of these vehicles have regenerative braking yeah. we will discuss it right so they, this is the front wheel configuration simple you can say you remove the engine and you use this one and differential is there and in this configuration it's again front wheel or of course this can re rear wheel also there is a motor and fixed ge gears and for each wheel you can say so no differential is required in this configuration because there are two motors we can play with the rpm with the controller and uh, the picture uh, at the bottom this is the tesla s rear wheel drive you can see this motor at the rear ends right and this is the all wheel drive again tesla vehicle which uh, there is a motor at the front and there is a motor at the rear right <coughs> so uh, better controls are available when we have the motor at uh, at uh, both the wheel this is the advantage actually yeah when when we have the motor at at both the wheels right so better control torque vectoring for better corner cornering performance and handling better traction on slippery condition more power so if we have independent motors on both the driving wheels and of course there is no gearing so the transmission losses are getting reduced so and the and the uh, the on the recent vehicles there is in wheel motor so in wheel motor that motor is directly going into the wheel itself right there is no fixed gearing fixed gear reduction required so the motor as it is is able to reduce and give torque in such a way that no gearing is required the release for wave motor pardon the release for wave motor release for wave yeah so uh, weight reduction as there is no transmission differential drive shafts so this is the in wheel motor uh, configuration and there is a challenge in uh, in wheel motor because all the power cables signal cables they are wheel is rotating so th that then th that comes a challenge so so to overcome that the coils coil system is used so the uh, this inner coil is with the wheel or with the motor right and there is a outer coil with no physical contact the transfer is by induction from outer coil to inner coil and all the communication can be done through the uh, with the earth, earthing and the car chassis and now we can see the uh, what kind of specification the electric vehicle batteries have the uh, 
these are as per the USA battery uh, guidelines. The energy density C by three discharge watt hours per liter. So one thirty five energy density. In the you can say the uh, current configuration vehicle available, and they plan to go up to three hundred watt hours <laughs> per uh, <clears throat> per liter watt hours per liter. That is the energy density. And uh, specific energy. This is water per kg of the ba battery. So 80, 80 is the current uh, available uh, batteries. So they want to go up to 200 watt hours per kg of the battery. And power density, power density watts, 250, and six uh, 600 is the ta target. and specific uh, specific power watts per kg so this is 150 and target is to go up to 400 and the lifetime of battery from 5 year to 10 years and the cycle life meaning number of cycles uh, it is possible to charge from 600 to 1000 One thousand cycles, and of course, price has to come down. And operating temperature range, which currently minus thirty to sixty-five, so it has to be widened to minus forty degrees centigrade to eighty-four degrees centigrade. And recharging time reduction from six hours to three to six hours, and fast charging time forty to eighty percent, fifteen minutes. So. these are the you can say the currently available battery technology specification and targets for long term so companies like panasonic toshiba so they they are the pioneers into battery technology and it, it just a comparison of lead acid and lithium ion how lithium ion batteries became popular like lead acid dis, uh, disadvantages we can see so cannot discharge more than 20% of its capacity like it's a 12 volt battery then it cannot go below 10 volt otherwise battery becomes dead if it goes with 10% less than the specified voltage has a, a limited life cycle if operated on a deep rate of discharge right so if we keep on discharging it to 20 up to 20% uh, then the life will tremendously go down like if the normal life of a lead acid battery 3 to 4 year it will further come down if we keep on discharging it to bottom level possible which is 20% of the specified low energy and power density right heavier and may need maintenance you have to top up all those things are there yeah. with the distilled water and so now then came the lithium ion battery and these are the uh, electrode negative uh, anode and uh, cathode configuration and advantages of these lithium ion batteries high energy density twice uh, and uh, good performance at high temperature recyclable low memory effect high specific power high specific energy long battery life around 1000 cycles from you can say 20% to 80 that is one cycle so 1000 cycles we can do like if person is driving daily 400 kilometers right then he will require a charge if the range is 400 kilometer so daily he will have one cycle so 1000 meaning 3 years but nobody is driving 400 kilometers daily so that it then it comes maybe 6 7 8 years the kind of warranty people are giving and this uh, the battery from the battery health point of view so these are the battery cells the small small or the cells right and they, they because of the kind of heat generated 
we they require cooling tubes and even some of the uh, batteries are air cooled also and some even have the refrigerant for cooling so these coils are for the, for the co coolant to run through but uh, like air cooling if the vehicle is stopped overnight then you cannot have the air cooling so air cooling can happen only when the vehicle is on the move so usually it's uh, cooled water cool, uh, coolant cooled and another uh, another important improvement uh, in battery technology is the equal equalizer circuit they are inductive type or capacitive to type because there are you can say hundred of cells in a battery right so the state of charge level the voltage level of each should be equal otherwise some, if even even some few cells become uh, high voltage or low voltage the battery performance will go down and temperature of individual cell can increase resulting into fire hazards so all the all the cells are connected through a capacitor and they are connected with each other so suppose voltage of one is higher and another is lower so then that voltage equalization will ha happen through these circuits so these inductive types are also there capacitive types are also there so here shown each cell is connected through a capacitor and a controller is there so that voltage equalization of these hundred of cells which make the battery keeps keeps up happening continuously and now we can uh, discuss the various motors being used on these ev vehicles of course in beginning even the normal induction motor or brush uh, dc motor were uh, were also used but the popular popular ones are the permanent magnet brushless dc motor like uh, in this uh, all the e rickshaw or e cart or golf cart which we uh, find in india which are made by the kits imported and even some of indian companies are also now manufacturing bldc motors so these are used in e rickshaw small small cars up to 60 kilowatt the disadvantage of this bldc motor or the drawback is that as the speed increases after some speed the motor torque reduces so the performance after this becomes uh, less performing the torque is reducing the power comes down so so for small capacity motors and vehicle then the bldc motor is useful another example of this bldc even the fans which bldc fans are now also the ceiling fan is also available they, it's only 30 to 35 watts capacity so the power consumption as compared to a normal fan which is 100 watts so it's only one third of uh, that is available <coughs> and the uh, the other more popular uh, type of motor which is being used on these all high end car which are now being launched it's a permanent magnet synchronous motor the rotation of shaft in synchronized motor is synchronized with the frequency of supply current right because there will be some slip in case of bldc motor but it is 100% aligned with the frequency of alternating current in case of uh, permanent magnet synchronous motor so the advantages of uh, permanent magnet synchronous motor are power available available over complete speed range so as we in bldc it was reducing in the total complete power, uh, the torque is available no gearbox required in wheel configuration which we have seen where the motor can be directly fitted into the wheel that is also possible with pmsm as uh, in wheel configuration possible as it provides excellent torque even at very low speeds right so the torque even at low speeds is so good we need not require a if gears the fixed gear system we can also 
remove and directly fit into into the wheel so the in wheel configuration only the synchronous motor is possible bldc cannot go into in wheel configuration so precise speed control most widely used on evs power factor almost unity which is otherwise 0.85 to 0.9 in case of bldc so unity power factor is possible on these motors even the kona vehicle which we seen is with the synchronous motor so just a recap on the uh, advantage and dis disadvantages so in permanent magnet brushless dc uh, the advantages you can say over a normal dc motor with br brushes no rotor copper loss more efficient than induction motor lighter smaller better heat dissipation more reliability more torque density more specific power right and the disadvantage is as compared to a pmsm motor short constant power range decreased torque with increase in speed high cost because of permanent magnet right and um, being used on tata prayas vehicle this is a popular vehicle of course and pms pmsm motor operable in different speed ranges without using gear system efficient more efficient compact suitable for in wheel application high torque even at very low speeds one disadvantage is huge iron losses at high speeds during in wheel operation and used on tata prius nissan leaf and soul electric vehicle the latest you can say tata prius is with pmsm motor this brushless as i told you all these e rickshaws available in india are with the bldc motor now the uh, kind of charging system because charging system is always a challenge for these evs so normal ac ac charging as well as dc charging systems are available the level 1 ac charging is the overnight charging with the household electricity of 15 amps with the 15 amps socket can be used but of course the disadvantage is the charging time which can be up to 12 hour 10 hours or in the latest vehicle 6 6 to 8 hours minimum is the charging time and the level 2 uh, primary charging in the ac charging available then it it the current ca can go up to 60 amps but of course this can uh, not be put by a person himself this this can be like a society buys this from third party and put it in their society so the char charging time can come down to less than 1 hour with the, with these systems and in place of 220 volt like the 440 volt coming from the line so directly it can be put in the line coming in the from the three phase and uh, they like this daxon is claiming 0 to 80% in 60 minutes with this kind of fast charger ac fast chargers in le less than 60 minutes and uh, another vehicle this kia vehicle they have fast charge in 30 minutes up to 50% and normal charge in 9.5 hours up to 95% this is for their low low end kia vehicle and for mid range and low power battery 39.2 kilowatt hour and motor sorry low end vehicle the lower one is for the low end vehicle the fast charging in 30 second 30 minutes up to 50% and normal charge in 9.6.5 hours up to 95% because battery itself capacity is lower so able to charge in 6 and 1/2 hours and the dc charging system because on the highways or at the dealer end this dc charging which is the fast charging they will be available they have more power than ac system and can charge faster their classification is done depending on power level they supply to the battery level 1 the rated voltage is 450 volt with 80 amps current 
the system is capable of providing up to 36 kilowatt and level 2 charges like in america and europe now level 2 charges are available on highways or at the sale point of the vehicle and the current capacity available is, is up to 200 amps and power 90 kilowatt so they will be able to charge in less than half an hour fast charging and some of the uh, features which we earlier discussed like regenerative braking in these electric cars this this feature of regenerative braking is available that when whenever the driver wants that he knows that he is at say some 25 meters from the red light he knows there is availability of vehicle in front or the distance and the time he can calculate and he can switch on the regenerative braking mode so vehicle will stop itself with the, all the sensors are there so with the regenerative braking it will stop no need to use the mechanical braking system and charging will also happen when this regenerative braking is being used so this feature is available he can just push a button so the braking will happen only with the regenerative system braking system and if you if he wants faster braking or even the mixed mode is also available where the braking will be partially through the pedal he presses and through regenerative or there is a mode available where uh, stopping will be only through the mechanical braking system like in a conventional car and other other features uh, uh, safety features available on these cars are like forward collision advance assist so if uh, the driver is not able to judge the vehicle in the front the the car itself through its distance sensor will be able to do the braking so for forward collision advance assist then there is a blind spot collision warning bcw again the, the sensors are there where the driver is not able to see the blind spot between his car and the other car so the sensors will automatically tell driver to move the vehicle to the other side to avoid collision then there is a, a smart cruise control scc system so the driver can uh, ask the vehicle to follow the vehicle in the front so at the, at the specified dif, uh, distance so the vehicle will moving with the safe distance from the next vehicle then there is a lane keeping syst system so the he need not change the like on a curve small curve the vehicle will follow the the lines marked on the road the lane lane uh, marks on the road then there is a lane following system also the vehicle will follow within the lane only if the tire tries to go over the lane there is a warning to the driver to change 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 into the lane system and uh, the advantages of uh, electric uh, vehicles if we compare what are the advantages in fuel consumption or co2 emission greenhouse gas emission uh, this this slide will give us the the top uh, uh, graph gives us the specific energy consumption kilo kilo joule per passenger kilometer right and the figures they have been taken in west bengal public transport in west bengal and uh, four vehicles are benchmarked one is a private bus of course diesel operated then a ac bus maybe a volvo or a other bus auto rickshaw and a e rickshaw so as compared to other vehicles the specific energy consumption of uh, e rickshaw is only 53.76 kJ per passenger kilometer as compared to e rickshaw which is 362 so maybe 5 to 6 times more energy is required by a auto rickshaw and per uh, ac bus and then private bus so this is the you can say the fuel fuel consumption or the cost to the uh, cost uh, benefit to the user will be there 
who will be running the e rickshaw and similarly these figures are con converted into indian rupees per passenger kilometer so lpg auto rickshaw this is you can say 62 paise and diesel 41 paise per passenger kilometer and e, e rickshaw it is only 9 paise per passenger kilometer so that kind of fuel consumption benefits are there in using electric uh, e rickshaw or electric vehicle and this figure is well to wheel energy efficiency so like from the exploration where oil is coming right and how the fuel costs and and if we charge the vehicle from uh, electricity how the uh, kilometer per mega joule of uh, kilometers are available so in case of a electric tesla vehicle so 1.14 kilometer per mega joule kilometers are available if we consider the, the oil being taken from the well right and directly being used for a uh, petrol or diesel vehicle or cng vehicle and if we are if we are charging it on uh, and charging the electric vehicle how the kilometer per mega joule is available so electric vehicle is around 1.14 which as compared to a honda cng 0 0.32 so almost uh, four four times more kilometers are available per mega joule of energy being spent and the well to wheel carbon dioxide emissions the tesla roads uh, roadster it it is around 12.6 gram per kilometer carbon dioxide which in case of cng or diesel vehicles they are around 40 gram per kilometer so one by fourth emission of co2 gases and uh, this is the acceleration the you can see the benefits of, on the drivability part so it can uh, from 0 to 60 miles per hour the electric vehicle can do in less than 4 seconds in case of a diesel vehicle it is 11 seconds and honda insight fcx 15.8 seconds so you can say acceleration time period is almost half or less than that from 0 to 100 km per hour or 0 to 60 miles per hour the uh, lower two graphs we already seen and now what are the barriers to ev adoption the challenges number one is the battery so batteries are the main area of concern as their contribution to the weight of the car is significant we have seen the example of a 1400 kg car where 440 kg is the battery weight only then the limited range the distance it can cover from one charge to other that is limited then long charging time because in a normal vehicle we can go to a gas station and within five minutes we can have the tank full for the day here the times we have seen then the safety concern some battery related uh, uh, fire hazards have also happened so for th for those all those capacitor system or inductive system for balancing are being in uh, put into place then also the insufficient charging stations i have yet to see in chandigarh of this area if there is any charging system and of course high price but high price you you can see from 35 lakhs two years back the equivalent vehicle is now available in 23 lakhs in india and with the indian companies also getting into even a small vehicle below 10 lakh is also available so price challenge and other challenges it will take some time to overcome but defi definitely in 10 years maybe 50 percent of the vehicles in india they will be on electric this is the ministry which has 
which is their time plan or their targeting. So that is it. So I finish with this. So if you have any questions, let me know. So how we increase or decrease the speed in vertical reader acceleration? Do I shown you that PWM pulse width modulator, right? So we we change the width as well as the height of the pulses. So those pulse, pulses are like we are switching on, switching off circuit, right? Yeah. So if we are switching on, switching off these uh, pulses, right? If the width is also reduced, the the no no uh, current transfer width increases. The actual current transfer width decreases. So the power will come down. So it, it it is actually how many number of times you are actually making the circuit on and off, and what is the uh, duration of how, how fast you are able to do. So this pulse width modulator is, is there. So this result into the average voltage available coming down. Average per unit time you can say if we are switching off more 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 time. So average voltage available comes down. So this 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 uh, permanent magnet synchronous uh, motor synchronous motor is per, uh, AC only. AC. Yeah. Of course, uh, battery is DC only. We have a uh, inverter which converts the DC into AC. Yeah. Yes, please. So, is there any uh, calculations regarding battery disposal? Battery? Disposal, because each against uh, having the environment. Yeah. Then we, uh, is it calculated in the 152 trees? No, no, no. No, no. That is not calculated. In 10 years, uh, huge battery will be there. Yeah. No, that, that, that remains the challenge. Even the, the simple battery we have today. That is also a challenge because usually when we go for battery replacement, that old battery is taken by the people and you get a new battery. That still remains a challenge. That is there. But as I told you, maybe one third of the vehicle cost will be battery replacement, which we are doing maybe eight or ten years. That is the one hindrance you can say will be there for small cars. So, any more questions? Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Lakshmi Shankar speaking from Punjabi University. Yes, please. Uh, sir, I want to know that uh, what is the logic of uh, faster charging on DC? Yeah. And why AC is slow? Okay. And uh, what are the latest norms of subsidy for uh, buying electrical vehicles? Okay. The, I will answer the last last portion. Uh, the like I gave you an example for a car uh, in NCR for a yes. car below below ten lakhs. Yes, sir. Uh, there is a subsidy uh, because we have not to pay the. Uh, registration charges around 75,000 uh, uh, rupees available. And in case of a vehicle of 23 lakhs, like a Kona vehicle, the subsidy is around 1.5 to 2 lakhs. Okay, sir. Yeah. And the, uh, as you said, DC chargers, because we, we are charging a uh, battery, which is DC only. So the DC to DC charging, the circuitry involved is more efficient. So that, that is helping in fast charging with the DC system. Okay, but why why it is not, uh, you are suggesting not 100% charging with DC? Because, uh, because the orientation or the chemical reactions right. the occurring throughout at the faster rate. So this will bring down the life of the battery. So that is why the last 20% uh, 20, 20 advised to be trickle charges on slow charges only. Okay, okay, right, sir. Yeah. And and maybe the exact chemical reaction even I am not a con conversant with what's the chemical reaction which are causing this. Right, sir, right, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, can I have uh, your email ID? 
I think I gave uh, it on the first slide. First slide. Just, uh, just a minute. Uh, you you can look on this r two p with the at the rate gmail dot com. Pardon? R two. Yes, please. R two p. Right, sir. Presently, sir, uh, are you working, sir, somewhere? No, no, no. I, I, I am not working for last uh, five, six months. I am a freelancer only. Okay, okay, sir. Right, yeah. right. But yeah. we can get some advantage from your uh, uh, lot of experience in. Sure. In, sure. Right, right, sir. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Coatings and electrical vehicles. Right. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you for a nice teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, any more questions, please? Hello. Yes, please. Sir, good good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, we are from Nasra Beta Engineering College, sir. Okay. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Okay. Sir, I uh for. Cold rolled or cold annealed phosphorus, which are more uh, comfort for defense for defense purpose, sir. Uh, I mean strength, very strength. Sir. No, can you repeat? You are asking from the surface coating uh, point of view. Phosphate. Yes, sir. Phosphate, sir. Phosphate. Cold or cold, cold annealed phosphate. No, the phosphating is like a process of deposition of a layer of uh, iron phosphate. Yes, on sir. the surface of a cold roll sheet like for for cold roll sheet it is recommended to go for zinc phosphate right okay sir uh, sir uh, another question sir yeah but, but surely i could not understand your first question even because generally what is recommended that for surface preparation for cold rolled and aluminium components it is recommended to go for zinc phosphate For thicker sections like cast iron uh, and uh, thicker section, it is recommended to go for iron phosphate. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I I have mistaken, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, which uh, which country uh, manufactured uh, electrical vehicles? Which country uh, heavily manufactured ve electrical vehicles, sir? No, we all know that uh, Tesla initially yes. maybe hundred years back somebody manufactured, but the yes. pioneer currently Tesla and the Chinese companies, they they are working uh, on that. And General Motors, then Toyota, they are all into electrical vehicles now. In India, because of the uh, price challenge or the cost challenge, all the technology is coming from China. This MG Hector Kuna. is of course korean but the parts of the electric motor batteries they are all coming from china okay sir thank you sir okay thank you more questions please done okay thank you very much thank you, thank you.